What up guys, it's your boy Dr. Zach here and for today's video, this is the link to my eight week cut of how to periodize your training for your niche, your sport, your activity, your goals. Before we jump into it, I want you guys to click that notification bell, hit that subscribe button so you guys know when the videos do come out. We got a lot of videos coming out. Before we jump into it, there's a little things you guys wanna take into consideration. Number one is your sport, uh, your goal, what are you doing? Are you an athlete? Are you a weekend warrior? Are you an everyday person that just wants to stay healthy? Like, what is your goal? Each of those individuals will have different training periodizations and their goals and needs will all differ. So I am speaking personally on an athlete level for boxing. I will give some examples of an everyday warrior for this video, but this is personalization just for me. And then you guys will just kind of understand get the picture. So this is what works for me and this is why I do it like this, all right? So the first thing we're gonna talk about is called the uh, speed strength curve. So on the left side, we got force. And this is gonna be the charts, this is the y-axis, x-axis, we got velocity, okay? So at the lower end of the velocity, we got max velocity, under 30% one or more. As we start going up this, we got speed strength, 30 to 60% of your one or more. A little higher, we got peak power, 30 to 80. A little higher, strength speed. So right, so these are just the little differences that are going on here. We got 80 to 90, and then at the max force, we got strength at 90 to 100% one or more. Now, for a boxing athlete, they will typically want to be around here. They don't wanna be super fast and not strong enough. They don't wanna be insanely strong and be too slow. So hovering around this end at your peak, which would be your fight, <laughs> your fight week, that's where you wanna be. Now, looking at fighting itself and the training for it, typically we are almost here. We're not at this end. And the reason being is that you spend more time in your sport around this level due to you're not lifting, you're trying to be fast, you're trying to be quick, and you're trying to be strong. So staying around speed strength and sometimes speed on you know those hit training sessions on the bag with your with your coach, with the pads, shadow boxing. There's not a lot of strength involved in boxing itself. All right, so what I mean by that is that mostly boxing is a faster sport. The training that you're doing is more of like plyo training. It's more explosive work, right? Like trying to come in and out. There's not a lot of heavy lifting strength. So to compensate for that, when you're gonna be in the gym and you're gonna be working out, you're gonna to wanna to structure your workouts around the opposite end. So the higher end of that graph, which what we talked about was max strength, strength speed. That's where kinda of where you wanna be playing at. So the time I spend in the gym boxing, I'm doing that ply, I'm doing the explosive, I'm doing like my in and outs, I'm going fast in the bag, I'm doing my hit training they're more on the lower end, they're more on the faster and less powerful types of training. So when I go in the gym, I like to do my heavy lifting, I like to do my deadlifts, my squats, my bench, my overhead press. But I do exercises that correlate to boxing, doing my, lead, my deadlift, my squat. When you're boxing, you're coming down and you're in the pocket and you need to explode up with as much force, as much power as you can. That's gonna be how much strength and muscle mass you have and those muscle fibers you've trained in the gym on your own time and then structure them to come into your boxing. So the weightlifting that I like to do in the gym is more on that higher end spectrum of the strength, of the max strength. As the weeks go by, I do less of the strength because I've spent the time doing it. I've spent my six weeks doing my strength training. So now I'm gonna take all those gains I made and apply them to the boxing. So that's where I'm gonna go lower to the explosive peak power, which was right at that middle there. Do a little bit of my speed strength or my strength speed. You know, maybe I'll do my squat uh, for five reps and then do an explosive jump squat. Factors you guys wanna take into consideration. I wrote a couple down, but this is just gonna be your goals, your sport, where you're at in your training program itself, your weaknesses. Like I said before, every sport is gonna have a different need, right? We talked about that. Now your weaknesses, that's another thing. Are you, where are you on the graph? Are you too strong and you're just really slow? Are you really fast and not strong enough? So start playing along that graph and finding where your weaknesses are. And then like we talked about before, your sport demands and then where you are in your camp. You don't wanna be going and doing 90% one or more, uh, one or more two weeks before your fight, a week before your fight, that doesn't make any sense. So where you are in your training program for your sport will dictate what you're gonna be doing and then how you should structure it, right? That's 
kind of the brief thing for that. That's how you periodize your training. Last, before I go, how to implement it if you're an everyday warrior, if you're an everyday person just trying to get fit, uh, you're gonna buy all these programs and you're like, yeah, I don't know what to buy, I don't know what to follow, uh, there's so much out there of what to do. Just start training, follow a six week protocol. That's probably the best thing you do. Six weeks is the best. Personally, you can go up to eight weeks, you can go as little as four weeks, but to see a nice progression, I like to go in the sweet middle. So six weeks is my go-to. Um, do a six week program of anything. So do six weeks of hypertrophy, do maybe four weeks of plyometric training and speed, and really just use the graph I showed you guys. So it's called the speed strength graph. I'll put a link down below so you guys can just check it out and just play along the graph. You know, do a couple weeks here, then maybe go down here, then go down in the middle and play with them. Um, typically, if you wanna follow like a structure, I would go get big and strong, so hypertrophy then work on some strength, then be explosive as fuck. <laughs> so some explosive power, some plyo, some speed, and then take a deload week off. So that can be anywhere between a six to 10 week training program that you will design yourself. Uh, you can YouTube so many videos, so many, you can Google so many things of what exercises to do. But honestly, if you wanna get big and strong, stick to the compound lifts, the multi-joint lifts, bench, deadlift, squat, uh, high refeeds, which is known as Bulgarian split squats, overhead press, uh, the calisthenic part. Yes, push ups can be hard, guys. Do one arm push ups if you think, oh, I can do 50. Well, won't you do one arm push ups? Because at the end of the day, it's mechanical tension, uh, eccentric training, and time under tension. So if you can do 300 push ups and you're in the middle of nowhere and you're like, well, make it harder, make it challenging for yourself. Pull ups, do some pull ups, do some single leg squats, do some handstand push ups. These are all things that you don't need a gym for, that you can do at home if a gym isn't uh, available to you. So these are things that you can do. Make it hard, make it fun, play with it. If you guys have any questions, comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and you can message me there as well. I am more active there on a day-to-day -day basis, but like I said, there's a lot of videos that are gonna be coming out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know down below with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know why, let me know what you wanna add. And uh, that's it. So it's your boy, that's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee.